Good afternoon, space flight enthusiasts. I am struggling with a really nasty cold that refuses to go away. I'm going to be heading to the doctor here in a few hours, but in the meantime, I have just enough time for a quick update for you folks. As most of us probably know, the moment of truth is rapidly approaching for Starship because things are getting very real now. The rocket that will hopefully take flight this Friday, no earlier than then 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, 5 p.m. Eastern Time, is going to be a lot closer to the mature and final version of Starship than the rockets that we've seen fly thus far. This rocket has a lot more propellant, therefore a lot more payload capability than previous versions, and many modifications and adjustments that have been made to the design to make this the interplanetary transport that SpaceX hopes it's going to be. And since SpaceX is contractually obligated to put a starship, an unmanned starship anyway, on the surface of the moon next year, they can ill afford a bad test flight. This has to go well so that we can move forward to another successful test flight and another, hopefully ramping up to as many as 25 launches per year that will rapidly bring Starship up to the level of maturity that it needs to be at if we are going to go back to the moon and also to Mars anytime in the near future. So it's been nearly two months since Starship Flight 6, and the FAA gave their approval for a flight weeks ago. So why has there been such a significant delay for Flight 7? Wasn't Elon Musk pitching a fit about how the FAA was holding back his progress on Starship? Wasn't he saying that the FAA was solely responsible for Starship's relatively slow rate of development? Well, there is a big difference between Starship Flight 7 and Starship Flight 6, because in many respects, this is a whole new rocket. For one thing, it will feature the first Block 2 Starship upper stage, number S-33. Now, from the outside, the biggest visual difference between this ship and its predecessors are the smaller forward flaps, which are also higher up on the rocket. SpaceX says that they did this in order to reduce the flaps, quote, exposure to re-entry heating while simplifying the underlying mechanisms and protective tiling. But this is just the beginning. SpaceX goes on to say, quote, redesigns to the propulsion system, including a 25% increase in propellant volume, that's going to make a big difference to payload capability, the vacuum jacketing of feed lines, a new fuel feed line system for the vehicle's Raptor vacuum engines, and an improved propulsion avionics module controlling vehicle valves and reading sensors all add additional vehicle performance and the ability to fly longer missions. Other internal upgrades to the ship include a complete redesign of the vehicle's avionics, which include a more powerful flight computer, integrated antennas, which combine Starlink, of course we know what that is, and backup RF communication functions into each unit, redesigned internal navigation and star tracking sensors, integrated smart batteries and power units that distribute data, and 2.7 megawatts of power across the ship to 21 high voltage actuators, and an increase to more than 30 vehicle cameras giving engineers, and hopefully us, insight into hardware performance performance across the vehicle during flight. SpaceX also said that it will fly 10 Starlink simulators, which are similar in size and weight to next-generation Starlink satellites. And SpaceX wrote that these version 3 satellites will have 160 gigs worth of uplink capacity and a terabyte of downlink speed, which is more than 10 times the downlink and 24 times the uplink capacity of the version 2 mini Starlink. 
Starlink satellites. This is a very important development for the future of Starlink because Elon has long said that until Starship is in service, therefore SpaceX has a rocket big enough to handle the V3 satellites, Starlink is not going to live up to its full potential and won't be a fully competitive system. So that's another reason that this flight is so important. Originally, SpaceX intended for these newer, larger V3 satellites to fly as V2, but delays of Starship caused them to shift to launching the V2 mini Starlink satellites on board Falcon 9s instead. 2024 featured 89 dedicated Starlink launches. Hard to believe, 89 Starlink launches and one rideshare mission, which was split between 20 Starlink satellites and an unannounced number of satellites for the National Reconnaissance Office's proliferated architecture constellation, which we believe to be Starshield. So these Starlink simulators will follow a suborbital trajectory and burn up in the atmosphere. During Flight 3, SpaceX performed a demonstration of the payload bay door opening and closing, but this will be the first time that Starship has deployed anything in orbit. And I'm glad they're going to re-enter the atmosphere rather quickly because dummy satellites are just unguided missiles in space and need to be deorbited as rapidly as possible. But probably the most important objective of Flight 7 is full reusability. Even though that's not what's going to be accomplished with this particular flight, SpaceX intends to take a big step forward towards that goal in 2025. That includes a relight demonstration of a Raptor engine while in space, and the upper stage will also carry out several experiments focused on ship return to launch site and catch. Musk said in a post in 2024 that catching Starship's upper stage might be attempted as early as Flight 8. On Starship's upper stage, a significant number of tiles will be removed to stress test vulnerable areas across the vehicle. Multiple metallic tile options, including one with active cooling, will test alternative materials for protecting Starship during re-entry. So, once again, SpaceX is continuing to work on that heat shield and it has not yet reached a full level of maturity. And it needs to get to that level soon if we're going to have complete complete reusability. SpaceX goes on to say, quote, on the sides of the vehicle, non-structural versions of ship catch fittings are installed to test the fittings thermal performance, along with a smoothed and tapered edge of the tile line to address hot spots observed during re-entry on Starship's sixth flight test. So once again, SpaceX admitting that the heat shield didn't exactly hold up the way they wanted, but I think they're making very good progress. Hopefully, they'll have a fully functional heat shield sometime this year. SpaceX also said that it took precautions to increase the likelihood that it will be able to proceed with a catch attempt of the Super Heavy booster as well. It acknowledged that damaged sensors prevented proceeding with the catch during Flight 6 and referred to hardware upgrades to the Mexilla launch and catch towers to prevent a repeat incident of that happening again. Additionally, SpaceX SpaceX will use a Raptor engine on the Super Heavy booster, B-14, which first flew on Flight 5 in October of 2024. Now, obviously, reusing one engine is a far cry from reusing an entire booster, but still, this is the first time that a Raptor engine has ever been reused for anything. A very, very important development, and once again, very important that all of this goes right if full reusability is going to become a reality anytime in the near future. And even though perhaps the upper stage can be expended for a while, it is absolutely vital vital that the booster get reused as rapidly as possible if SpaceX is hoping to carry out an unmanned landing attempt on the moon in 2026. Officially, Lunar Starship is actually supposed to be attempting a landing in 2025, but given the fact that NASA just pushed out their schedule even further, I believe that they're probably anticipating a 2026 landing attempt, and there are quite a 
a number of hurdles that remain between that goal and where SpaceX is now, but this flight is going to make a very, very important contribution to that long-term goal. Once again, very important that it goes well, which is a tall order, a very big ask to expect this new rocket with all of these new modifications to perform perfectly or close to perfectly on its first test attempt. Once again, if SpaceX wants to get where Elon wants them to be, and that is to say, getting to Mars inside of the next couple of years, and also where NASA wants them to be on the moon in 2026, well, this flight is very important indeed. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, please keep in mind that I have a contest going on right now where I'm giving away two pieces of the Boca Chica launch facility. One will go to a random Patreon supporter and one will go to a random Super Thanks donor. So check the description if you want to support me on Patreon or just hit that Super Thanks button and you will automatically be entered into the contest. Keep in mind, I can only ship these fragments to North America or Europe. I'm very sorry, viewers around the rest of the world, but it's just too expensive for me to ship something that heavy anywhere else. So good luck, and until next time, stay angry about space.